Need LASIK? Trust the experienced team at the LASIK Center at Evergreen Eye Center. No glasses, no contacts, no limits. What will you do? LASIK at evergreen.com. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal's second date update. I think the best way to make a first impression on a first date is to show her your rage issues right away. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just rage on the first date the whole time. Usually ladies like that a lot. Anger to turn us yeah, on. Yeah, they do. Oh, they love it. Mm-hmm. That's why Adam is on the phone right now. He emailed us about a date that he had that he feels didn't go so great because he was a little angry when he showed up to his date. Oh, no. Adam, how are you? <laughs> Hey, guys, how are you? I'm good. Hey, man, first of all, I will say I read your email, and the issue that you had in getting to your date and the way you acted on your date, I can't blame you. I think I would have acted the same way. I've been in this situation a lot. But go ahead and tell everybody about how you met the girl that you want us to call today. So uh, her name was Ren. Ren? And, uh, you know, it was one of those, like, friend of a friend thing. Um, Mm -hmm. We were both single. They set us up. thought she was real good looking. I was really attracted to her. Looking through her pictures, it really seemed like she was going to be a good fit. So I was pretty stoked on the date from the beginning, before we even actually met for the date. Right, before you met and showed her your angry side. (laughs) Dude, I didn't mean to show her my angry face. That wasn't wasn't the goal of the date. Yeah, but in your email, you said you you got there and you just raged for the whole time, pretty much, and you felt kind of awkward about it. Explain what happened. I mean, I I, I gave myself plenty of time to get to coffee. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to do on a first date is show up late. And all of a sudden, I got to know where this ass turns into the lane in front of me and starts going like 20 miles per hour. And I wasn't running late, but this guy, he just, I felt like he was messing with me because I'm just sitting there. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm beeping and I'm, I'm honking and I'm trying to be nice first. And then I just lose it. I, I flip a switch and I start going crazy on this guy. And he, he's just such a <laughs> ass because I'm just trying to get somewhere. You are yeah, see, still you're, you're already raging with us. We're just trying no, to ask you. Was an ass Okay, yeah, no, hey, dude, Adam, you're talking to the king of road rage right here. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. constantly oh, I'm pissed off in my right car, now. so I understand. You're still shaking. So, yeah, you were angry about this dude. Yeah, well, of course I was angry. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, this guy who pulls in front of me makes me 10 minutes late, and that pissed me off, and I tried to let it go, and I, I guess it was just nervous energy. Uh, I just kind of wouldn't shut up, and I just talked nonstop pretty much the whole day. Were you talking about this guy the whole time? Pretty much. Do you have anger issues normally? Are you an angry guy? I tend to think I'm I'm pretty even killed guy, but you it sound, don't you sound like, like it. it. I asked you to recap the incident on the way to the date, and you just went off on us. So you sound like know, an angry dude. Are you are you an angry guy, or are you? Uh, I'm not normally you know really an angry guy. Mm-hmm. I think it was just the nervous energy of going to the date, and I think it's a mix of both of those things. I just kind of you know had a tough time. Did you explain to her that you were upset? At a guy that you... I did. I think it just came off angry. (laughs) Yeah, I see how that happened. Did she comment about your anger? Did she say, like, whoa, you're still pretty upset about this? Not really. I mean, she was pretty quiet about it. She was really quiet. Probably quiet Mm -hmm. because she was scared for her life. (laughs) People get that way. (laughs) That's where I felt real bad with I just kind of just talked nonstop for 45 minutes. Did she get a word in edgewise? I mean, not much. <laughs> All right, so uh, really. so you talked at her the whole time. Well, I mean, at the end, I you know I said to her, I asked her about going out on another date, and and I apologized to her, and I said that you know I'm not normally like this and all this stuff, and and you know we slapped five. You you high five at the end of the day. Oh, I wasn't gonna kiss her. I was like sweating <laughs> from from being so nervous, and pissed off. What kind of five are we talking about here? Like on the side, down low, high five, <laughs> up high, up she high. All right. So you gave her a high, high five to say goodbye. Did you ask to see her well, we again? Did interlock fingers though, guy. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, that's almost good. a handhold. You almost held her hand on the first date. Did you ask to see her again? Well, yeah, we talked about it, and I mentioned I throw her a text, and I texted her a few times, and I haven't really heard back. So I'm kind of curious, you know. I, I know it didn't go great, but I thought it ended good. After you apologized to her, did you say, oh, I totally understand. I've been there before, or? Uh, not so much. Mm. And so she seemed um, upset. Yeah, I, I mean, I told her. I said I, 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 told, I told her that, you know, my energy level was off, and, and I was really nervous for the date, as it was. And then this happened, and it just, it just totally threw me. And I, and I feel horrible about it, and I told her that. And she seemed receptive to it. Yeah. But this whole situation, you know, it just it, it, it didn't go well, and... I really want a second chance because I think her and I could really do well together. And I think that even with my anger issues, you know, the, the little bit of road rage and stuff, I feel like a girl like her could really calm me down. Okay. Oh, that's kind of sweet. All right. Well, we'll play a song, come back, call her, and get your second date update, okay? 
great. Thank you, guys. All right. Try not to freak out. Hang on. <laughs> Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal in the Mornings. Second date update. Adam is on the phone with us. He wants us to call a girl named Rin today for his second date update. They went out, met for coffee. He was 10 minutes late and ended up being very frustrated from a road rage incident that made him late. Feels like he just vented about the thing the whole time and was just angry and didn't even let her get a word in edgewise while they had their coffee date. Adam, you about ready to give her a call? I'm ready, man. All right. I was thinking about this. Most girls, when they list the traits that they like in a potential mate, they usually say something like, I like a guy who's sensitive, a guy who's caring, good job, very yeah. responsible. They usually don't list potential homicidal maniac <laughs> as, a, as a good quality. So that's probably why she's not calling you back. I mean, if you went on a first date with somebody and they showed up a little late, first of all, that's one strike against you, and then proceeded to just be angry the whole time. I doubt you'd be so willing to call him back, too. I mean, I think that's kind of the issue, and that's why I'm trying to make it work with her again, because I really do feel like I had a bad representation. You want a do-over. Yeah, I just want to try one more time. You know, I, I want to I kind of show Ren, the Adam, that I really am. Okay. okay and you think this call is going to do it for you? You've got a level head on you right now. Yeah. Can we just get this going so I don't get pissed off about right. it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to call it right now, man. Here we go. Hello. Hi, can I speak to Ren, please? This is she. Hey, Ren, how are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning, the radio program. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong number. No, I'm pretty sure I have the right number, Ren. There's not a whole lot of Rens, and I was given your number by a guy named Adam to call you today. What? Yeah. <laughs> Adam is a listener to our show. And he says he recently went out on a date with you, but you're not calling him back. And he asked us to see if we could get you on the phone and ask why. How do you know him? He listens to our radio show. Adam wanted <laughs> us to call you to ask if uh, if he did something wrong on your date or there's a particular reason that you don't want to see him again. This is... I don't even really know how to respond to this. I... I know did he it's talk uh to you about this. He did. He told us that you went out for coffee and he said that he was a little late and he actually feels bad because he thinks that he may have been a little upset from a traffic incident and he wasn't very <laughs> attentive to you on your date. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is that a pretty accurate description? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I I I get this is what you guys do, so I don't mean to be disrespectful at all. I'm just kind of like no, God. it's fine. I appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us. We just want to pass along a message to Adam and give him your perspective on the first date. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can talk about that. My experience with Adam was very limited, and I'm not a very confrontational person. Mm -hmm. And he was very, very angry. And I think that the first 10 minutes of the time that we very, very first were introduced to each other, it was really just all about this driving experience <laughs> he had had, being so frustrated with this other person. Was he, like, cussing and stuff when he was explaining it to you? Yeah, I mean, it's not like it was so, so over the top that I would have needed to have left, because uh -huh. I would have done that if it was really, really that bad. If he was That's what I was going to ask you, Ren. I was going to ask you if at any point you were scared yeah. for your life. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wouldn't say that. It really wasn't like that, but it was pretty intense. Even when he finally went to go get us some coffee, uh -huh. um, which he did, you know, finally pull himself up to, to be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go get us some coffee. But <laughs> Pulls himself together. <laughs> Even in that moment when he goes to order the coffee, he, I can hear him from, from all the way at the other end of, of the shop, and he's ordering, and he, he just sounds aggressive. So was he, like, yelling at the barista and stuff like that? I, I'm picturing him just tearing up this Starbucks or wherever you're at. No, it, it really wasn't like that. It wasn't like he was he was unkind toward the people around him necessarily. It's just, the, like, the manner in which he was dealing with things. It was just, like, pent up. You know when somebody's really upset mm -hmm. about something, and even though they are doing something normal, it's in an abnormal way. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing that was that was tough. It was manifesting in like sweat. Oh. He was so mad that he was sweating. 
Well, I don't know if he just sweats, if that's a thing, independent of what was going <laughs> okay. on. But it seemed like it was fueled, or at least, like, made a lot worse <laughs> by his emotional space. Rin, it's called hyperhidrosis. It's because people who can't serious? control their sweat glands, okay? They sweat a ton. He, maybe he has that. How do you oh. know this? <laughs> so you don't want to see him again because he's an angry, sweaty mess. <laughs> <laughs> Not just that he was sweating a lot and being angry. It, he was sweating profusely like it's the palms of his hands there was sweat dripping was down it? him and then collecting like under i'm trying to think of the right way to say this um like oh man boobs you know oh, oh gosh <laughs> he sweated yeah, out his whole sweating, shirt like dark dark just covered in sweat. Oh, oh man. It stains boob stains. Yeah, that's bad. If he's pitting out a little bit, that's kind of like, whoa, man, you sweat a lot. Yeah. But if he actually his whole shirt was sweated oh. out. I don't think that's bad. That's what, and that's what I was concerned about. Because I know that when I'm upset, like, I'll sweat a little bit, and that's normal. But it was, whoa. <laughs> it was so much. I'd be curious to find out if it's an issue or if it's just his anger that makes him sweat like that. Aren't you curious to at least know? Honestly, maybe he's a really great person that just had a really bad day, but hmm. I just don't want to deal with it. Okay. I really don't. That's cool. Thank you for giving us an answer. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But I, I yeah. really need to find out about this sweat, and that's why I'm glad you're still on the phone, because Adam is also on the phone and heard everything you just said. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Ren. Oh, my God. I'm... First of all, I'm really, really sorry. Look, this is really, I'm, I'm sorry, and then I'm also, like, annoyed to be put in this situation. I, but I am sorry if you heard things that I said um, that are unfair. Oh, my God. You don't need to feel bad, Ren. Every, pretty much everything you said is, is true. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I can kind of explain the sweating thing, the anger stuff. Um, the sweating thing, let's start with that. <laughs> Point one. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know, I threw a hoodie and a coat on, and it ended up not being as cold out as I anticipated. By the time I was all pissed off at this guy in front of me, I started sweating in the car because I was last in the heat, and I was so pissed off I wasn't thinking about it. The coffee shop had the heat on. I, like, couldn't stop sweating, and I knew I was, and I know that my man boobs were sweating. Oh. Yeah, and, and that was a crappy thing for me to say about man boobs. That was rude. I'm sorry. That was just the first thing. No, it was I just the easiest thing. That That's what I think I want you to hear. It's like, I'm not that angry guy. I know I was sweaty. I know I was hot as <laughs> And I thought if I didn't pay attention to it, you wouldn't mention it. Like, I, I, I was so lost in that date, and, like, I didn't know what to do, and... I went home and showered right away. I was like, <laughs> I was looking in the mirror and like, I literally like was mortified by myself because I was really excited about this date. And like, I never tell friends about going out with anybody, but for some reason I was kind of stoked on you and uh, I just crashed and burned. And I kind of do that a lot in life. And I just want you to know that I, uh, I really am sorry. And as far as you and I are concerned, like I'd love one more shot, just one more chance to maybe sweat it out with you and uh, <laughs> sweat it out. Hey, Ren, would you like to go out with Adam again? I will pay for a second date. We can send you guys to a spin class or something where sweat is supposed to be there. <laughs> and would you maybe give him another shot to see if he's not so flustered this time? He can he can do a better job. Adam, I'm like this is awkward, and and I just want to say I appreciate you eventually being honest. I think that what I would have preferred is if you could have communicated this to me not on a radio station, because you did contact me, and you didn't really ever just come out and say. I totally get it, Ren. I mean, as crazy as I was there, it's probably crazier that I, I ended up on the radio with you right now. But <laughs> I tried calling, and I texting you, and, you know, you never got back to me. And so, like, I felt like this was my last option of how I could get a hold of you. Ren, will you do it? Will you go out with him one more time? Come on, Ren. We've never had anyone be so sincere. Will you drive, please? Just so we're... <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. One more day. Yes! Nice. Woo! All right. Ren, thank you for your time. Adam, congratulations. You got your second oh, date, man. man. Thank you, guys. Ren, this is going to be great. I promise you. I'll see you soon. Adam, two <laughs> words before your next date, all right? Gold bond. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Broken Jubal in the morning. The text in at 78592 about today's second date update. It just says four words, mm. gold bond and Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Which could have helped out Adam a lot oh, on his Adam. date. Yeah. He wanted to call a girl named Rin. He was a little late for their coffee date. 
He got into a little road rage incident on the way. <laughs> and he thought that was the reason why he wasn't getting a call back because he was just venting about that the whole time. Yeah. It's partly why he wasn't getting a call back, but he was also super sweaty. Yeah. Because he was yeah. nervous and upset, and I guess he was just drenched in sweat the whole time. Well, and he dressed wrong. It's hard sometimes, you know? Yeah. You do the sweatshirt and the coat, and then you realize it's too late. I mean, like, once you start sweating, you can't take any of it off. Yeah. No. You have you to know? leave it on because now you have pit stains. Yeah, totally. and now it's like 80 times worse. Yeah. And, and like, what a bad day to start already with the rotor engine and then just keep snowballing. Yeah. It's a bad sign. It was a spiral. But he, definitely... I think they're going to recover. I think they're going to be good. Yeah, they decided to go out again still. And he'll know. just make sure that he <laughs> wears enough deodorant and maybe takes that texter's advice and gets some gold bond there and rubs go. down and everything else to to make sure that he doesn't get too sweaty <laughs> on his next date. I really think he needs to learn how to layer clothing. It's going to help him a lot. It will, okay. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, if you want to do a second date update, all you have to do is email the show and we will call the person who didn't call you back. It is the radio segment that knows you've been checking it out all evening and is interested. <laughs> Laser Stories, the segment where we read weird news stories from around the globe, just like every other radio show does, except we have a laser, and those other numbskulls don't. This first laser story is out of Milton Keynes, England. Last week, a 36-year-old guy named Travis Boston was pulled over for speeding, and the cop asked for his driver's license. But instead, Travis reached into his wallet and pulled out a Homer Simpson's driver's license instead. Mm. No! Because <laughs> you should always have one of those on hand. A cartoon character? <laughs> yeah. The license had Homer's picture on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> his signature and a lot of other information. But it might not be authentic Simpsons merchandise since it had his address listed as 28 Springfield Way. When every single real Simpsons fan mm -hmm. knows that he lives at 742 Evergreen Terrace. Duh. So, basically, Travis gave the cop a bootleg novelty Homer Simpson license. A bad bootleg. <laughs> yeah. A fake fake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe his plan was to try to get the cop laughing so she wouldn't realize that he didn't have a real license or insurance or anything really, but that didn't work. Travis' car was impounded and he's facing two charges <laughs> for driving without a real license oh. and insurance. <laughs> Sometimes you think if you just hand it over with enough confidence, maybe they won't actually yeah. look at it. <laughs> well, I kind of look like Homer a yeah. little bit. <laughs> this next laser story is out of China. There's a 47-year-old woman who was traveling across the country on a train last week. She was lying down on her side, looking at her phone, and she didn't move from that position for the entire 20 hours. <laughs> How? Oh, this no sounds idea. Painful to I can't me. I go like three minutes without like adjusting myself. <laughs> so when she got off the train, she fainted right there on the platform. What? Yeah. Whoa. You gotta move in 20 hours. Full circulation. Yeah. <laughs> she was rushed to the hospital, where the surgeons found she had two life-threatening blood clots on her brain. Oh my god. Oh. The neurologist who treated her says, "quote We think." She kept the same, uh, <clears throat> we think that she kept the same posture for too long, which compressed the blood vessels on the right side of her neck, causing never, blood clots. Never heard oh of that. my That's god. Crazy. So she almost killed herself being addicted to her phone. Yep. <laughs> Fortunately, they were able to remove those blood clots, and the woman is recovering. When reporters, when reporters went to interview her in the hospital room, they found out they found that she was in bed staring at her phone again. Shut so, up. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh -huh. <laughs> stop with the phone. Uh -huh. Take it away from her, somebody. I know, right? <laughs> this next laser story is out of March Madness. If you didn't hear, last week, the University of Maryland, Baltimore Count... Mer sorry, they have a confusing name. They really the University of Maryland, Baltimore County... Yes. <laughs> I had to Google search it to even know who they were. <laughs> ...beat the University of Virginia in the NCAA tournament. It's wow. the first time ever a number 16 seed beat a number one seed. It was so cool. And they crushed them, too. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. And it sounds like a great school after what I learned <laughs> from my Google search. I know. That's what always happens around yeah. this time of year. When March Madness comes, <laughs> yeah. you're like, where's that? Who's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. People pay money to go to that school. Yeah. It sounds like a technical college. Right. Uh, no. Before that game, 16 seeds were 0 and 135 against number ones. And... That's bad news for Little Caesars. Before the game, they tweeted that if a 16 seed beats a one seed, they'll give everybody in the country a free lunch combo. Yes! Oh, we backfired. have free lunch from Little Caesars coming up? <laughs> if you didn't know, a free lunch combo is a personal deep dish, deep dish pizza and a bottle of soda. Nice! Seemed like a safe bet. And then, 
not so much. Because yeah. <laughs> they, the, the 16 seed beat a one seed. So. You know, crazy. and Little Caesar's probably listening right now, like, stop talking about it. Yeah, don't I'm hoping everyone. that everybody would notice. <laughs> so now Shut on up. April 2nd, you can go to a participating Little Caesar's between 1130 in the morning and 1 p.m. and get yourself a free lunch. Ah, uh, but they say participating. Yeah. A lot of these owners are like, I'm yeah. not following that, man. <laughs> Screw you guys, they corporate. You guys me. are idiots. You have a one day, one and a half hour window. But you know what? I'm going to make it. <laughs> Because you know what tastes better than pizza? Free pizza. Absolutely. Yeah. I know. You know they're all freaking out. They're like, okay, how can we make this as short as possible? Yeah. Can we do like a five-minute five minute free lunch window? Right. Um, Little Caesar says it expects it expects to fulfill millions of free orders from across the country that day. I bet. This next laser story is out of the wacky world of wedding trends. Apparently, the hot new trend for American women is to skip wearing an engagement ring, and instead, they're having the diamond implanted directly into the skin on their ring finger. Whoa! Yeah! Like a piercing. Yeah. That oh sounds so painful. Ouch. Like, there's not, it's like mostly bone. Yeah, what are guys? Against your Try bone? throwing that thing when you're in an argument. <laughs> <laughs> Chop off your whole finger Good and toss idea. it across the room. <laughs> This is a real thing, and already hundreds of women around the country have chosen this option. How does it work? Well, the diamond is held in place with something called a dermal anchor, which is a little hook that's implanted underneath the skin. Oh my God, which means it could still get ripped out. Mm -hmm. And it hurts quite a bit to uh, have that put in, they say. Also, there are some potential health risks. Your cells can reject the anchor, and it can lead to permanent scarring or tissue damage. Mm. But hey, anything to have that diamond implanted into your skin. <laughs> Experts say that the ladies who are choosing this option are attempting to stand out from the crowd and be different. How about just do something besides a diamond, ladies? I mean, I don't know if you want to be different. I got some other ideas for you other than a diamond implant. Yeah, so they want to be different, but they're probably not thinking about the potential health problems or disfigurement maybe by jamming a diamond into a hand, but whatever, they're doing it anyway. Text in 78592, does that sound cool to you or just crazy? This next laser story is out of fast food headquarters. Sonic just announced that this summer they're going to sell a new dessert item. It's called a pickle slushy. Oh, that sounds what? so good. Are you being serious? Yeah, you would I eat love that? Pickles. Oh, you, I In eat pickles a slushy? Yeah, pickle juice. Picture a snow Gross. cone that's flavored with pickle juice. I like pickle juice too. Yeah, it's good. And it's supposed to be good for you. You guys, frozen pickle juice? There is no way that much sodium is good for you. You need to reevaluate what you define as good <laughs> you for don't you. Look at the numbers. It so doesn't matter. Why is Sonic betting on their new pickle drink? Well, apparently, pickle juice is one of the hot food trends this year. Is it? So maybe they're trying to get ahead of the curve with all the pickle juice fans out there. Foodbeast.com got a sample of the new pickle juice slushy, yeah. and they say, quote, it's a unique syrup that provides a punch uh. of briny, ac briny acidity, but has enough sweetness to take the sharpness out of the flavor. Interesting. So it's a syrup. I thought they like, legit were just pouring pickle but, juice yeah, on Yeah, you would think you'd be able to. Yeah. Gross, <laughs> Also, Sonic says that if you don't want a straight pickle juice drink, then they say you can add syrup to any drink you want. Oh, the, so you can do like pickle a cherry syrup. pickle. Strawberry pickle. Yeah. Oh, or you can just oh, add pickle that. juice syrup to something else. Like, I want a pickle Coke. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, there's going to be so many like pregnancy jokes when people order this. Like, oh, oh, yeah. oh pickles. Yeah. You want peanut butter too? Like, <laughs> you have us some ice cream. Pickle slushies will hit their stores mid-June. But I wouldn't anticipate lines out the door for that one. Yeah. Just a few people. That's very particular. <laughs> yeah. This next laser story is out of workplace headquarters. According to a new survey, the average person says they're bored at work for at least 10 and a half hours every week. Really? It's that more than two hours a day. It does seem <laughs> yeah. long. Our bosses know that we're not totally stimulated all the time, but they don't think it's that bad, apparently. Yeah. The average manager says their employees are only bored about six hours a week. <laughs> Way you know, to be in like, touch, managers. I'm a fun manager. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they love it here. Uh -huh. They're never bored. Yeah, so what do people do to kill time? Some of the answers that they gave are watching videos online, daydreaming, cleaning their desk, doodling, pretending to work, and also looking for other jobs. <laughs> Spit in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, there you go. Most people are bored at work. How do you kill time at work? Text it in. This uh, guy has never worked a day in his life because this is his only job. And you know what they say. If you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. That's the sound of a turtle humping a shoe. Another hard day's work, which means Laser Stories has come to an end for the day. We'll do it again, same time, on Wednesday. 
Move it 92.5. Mm, hey, girl. What's up with you? Wait a minute. Is this the right number? It's um the loser line. Come on. Just call me back. If you haven't heard the loser line before, it works like this. Let's say somebody approaches you while you're out at the club and uses this charming pickup line. Hey, what's a girl like you doing in a place like this? When there's Battlestar Galactica marathons on the Sci-Fi Channel right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, huh? What? <laughs> Apparently. Okay. There's better places huh. to be for that dude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, don't tell him that he's weird and you're not into Battlestar Galactica. And yeah. You don't just don't get into. Don't go down that road. Don't engage with him. Don't. Otherwise, you'll be talking about <laughs> Battlestar Galactica for oh my way gosh. too long. <laughs> Seriously. Instead, tell him that you'd be interested in watching that with him sometime, and then yeah. give him the number to the loser line, and hopefully he'll call us and leave a voicemail that we can play for you. Voicemails like this one. Next message. What's up, Sharon? Yeah, you know who the f*** this is, all right? Listen, I called you six times, all right? You give me your number, you say you want to go out with me, and then you don't return my phone calls? I drive a Camaro, okay? A Camaro. Why'd you give me your number if you didn't want me, you know... Whatever. Next oh, message. Oh my God. Damn. Yeah, Man, thought, she messed up. I know. At first, I was like, no wonder she gave him the loser line. And then he dropped that Camaro. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, lady, what were you thinking? Yeah, I was like, how does this guy feel like he has the right to talk to somebody like that yeah. who we just met? But he drive a Camaro. You pretty much write your own rules. Oh, you know? man. Yes, you do write your own rules. They're not very good rules, but you write them. Next message. Hey, it's Um, I don't know if you, like, remember me, but... I was that girl at the bar the other night. Like, we were dancing right by each other, and I was just watching you, like, all night. You're so hot. So (laughs) I tried calling you a couple times. I don't know if maybe, like, something's messed up with your phone. But I got your number from your friend as we were, like, walking out, and I really want to, like, meet up. So call me, okay? Bye. Next message. (laughs) So hot. I thought she sounded fun. I'd call her. I don't know. You want to call me, girl? We'll hang out, go get some drinks. I don't know. Come on. I like compliments about my looks. Yeah. So I would call her. (laughs) I don't know. I'd be like, whoa, you think I'm hot? Okay, fine. Uh, Yes. Do this. This this guy has really high standards, I feel like. Also, I don't believe you one bit, but that's fine. Yeah. (laughs) Keep talking. Remember, you can get the number to the loser line. All you have to do is text the word loser, L O S E R, to 78592. Next message. Hey, where are you? I thought you were working yesterday. I went out there. The weren't working yesterday. So. Anyway, I thought I'd call and keep you around, keep what's going on. Anyway, I love you, honey. So I'll um, probably talk to you later. I gotta get moving here. I got some stuff. I got some stuff to do. So anyway, um, I'll try to give you a call later if I can. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Next message. Okay, again, I don't know why the people on the loser line today have gotten the loser line phone number. All of them sound like catches. <laughs> that guy sounded drunk. You guys, I'd call that guy. I mean, he said, I love you, and he has a loser line. And, oh, and it no. sounds like he's stalking somebody at work. Yeah. Well, yes, but I bet he tips well. You're thirsty, bro. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I feel like I'm just kind, okay? <laughs> well, kindness can get you killed, I think, yeah. in some instances. Next message. Hey, me, I was calling you because I wanted to see if you could pay me back the money that you owe me. Um, <laughs> you said that it would, you would have it by Friday. It's already Friday. Um, it's actually been two Fridays since you told me that you would pay me back my money, and I still haven't received it. It's two thousand dollars <gasps> that you owe me, and I really need that to be able to buy my baby Pampers. If you could please return my call, I really need my money. Bye. Next oh, message. Oh. We've had so many people dodge debt collectors and people that they owed money to on the loser line. <laughs> it sounds like he said, I'll pay you by Friday. And she's like, okay, sure. I know he will. Yeah. <laughs> Which Friday was he talking about? Two Fridays. Of, okay, so it wasn't that Friday. It must be this Friday then. And how are you lending money to people that you don't have their phone number for? That's the nice like, thing. See, these are yep, nice people. They're, they're, okay, but themselves. I have she a probably line, would say all that. right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a kind person. Yeah. So I give people money and they Bless tell me you. they'll pay me back on Friday. And then I forget that I didn't ask for a date. There's Which a, Friday is it? There's a difference between being kind and just being dumb. Not really in my book. I yeah, I know you don't think so. Kind equals dumb, yeah. Here's another message. Next message. Hey, okay, look, it's again. Okay, okay. 
Okay, you know what? I'm not going to be calling anymore. And just FYI, if you say that you're free for a weekend, that means you want to hang out with that person. So when a person calls and calls and calls and you don't return their call, that means you lied to them in the first place. All right? So guess what? I'm done. Bye. End of messages. I I like it. Yeah. When people have power moves on the loser line, it's great because they think that they're telling somebody off, but really... Ultimately, they're getting so screwed. God, I just flashed on all his poor ex-girlfriends that had to deal with a breakup with that guy. Yep. Like, oh, Look, I am sorry. Here's how it's going to go from now yeah. on. Yeah. Right? Gross, Here's man. the deal, all right? I'm going to call up a fake phone number to a radio station <laughs> and look like a complete jackass. Yeah. And that's how it's going to work with me. But do you me. know that's what, though? He's driving his Camaro away, so it doesn't matter. Oh, that's right. All right? That's true. <laughs> you know? Again. He's living a good life. Drive a Camaro. Yep. Make your own rules. Totally. That should be their new advertising <laughs> campaign. All right, that was the loser line. Listen to it regularly on Mondays at 7, 10, and 9, 10. Your phone tap is coming up right after this. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. 60 seconds away from your shock caller question of the day. But before we get into that, we live in the greatest GD country on planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, we Amen. Do. Talking America. about the United States of America. America, yeah. And Americans are so good at so many things. Yeah, we are, We're good actually. at putting food inside of other food. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We're good at making hit music with as few words as possible. <laughs> and, of course, making X-rated movies. Yeah, we are. Trust me, <laughs> you don't want to see the adult movies they make in Kazakhstan. <laughs> very bad. Bad quality. But one thing we're not very good at is naming our cities. <laughs> it's amazing how many towns in this country have absolutely ridiculous names. I say that because a real estate website just compiled a list of the towns in America with the weirdest names. And I can only guess that the townspeople were drunk when they thought of these names. <laughs> Here are some of our favorites. Number seven, Chicken Bristle, Illinois. Chicken hey. Bristle? Yep. Chicken oh Bristle, God. Illinois. I kind of like that. Yeah, because yeah, you like chicken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number six, OK, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. So written out, not OK, OK, just yeah. OK, A-Y. Okay, yeah. OK, Oklahoma. I mean, they didn't get real creative with their capital either. It's Oklahoma City. So. No. <laughs> Number five, Booger Hole, West Virginia. <laughs> Please let me meet someone from Booger Hole. Oh, my God. My life would be complete. Number four, Big Bottom, Washington. Yeah. yeah. Get it. It's a place I want to go live. I feel like all the girls yeah. there and the guys there got big butts. They Number wouldn't th- allow me to live there. My butt isn't big enough. Number three, Toad Suck, Arkansas. Oh, <laughs> T-O-A-D-S-U-C-K. Toad Suck, Arkansas. There? Oh, my God. I hope they host a lot of weddings. Like, we're getting married. It's in Toad Suck. Mm-hmm. Number two, Scratch Ankle, Alabama. Like, how did that get named? So we're on their way to somewhere else, and that's yeah. where the lead explorer stopped and scratched his ankle. Like, this will be known as Scratch Ankle, Alabama. Forever. And the weirdest town in America, Smart, Tennessee. But smart is spelled S-M-A-R-T-T. Oh, my smart gosh. Smart, Tennessee. Oh, that's, that one's funny. That's genius without the eye, yep. right? <laughs> Text in at 78592 if you've ever been to any of those places. All right, it's time for the shot caller question of the day. Young Jeffrey is coming to the studio with a hat full of names. We'll draw a name out of the hat to see who will put on the shock collar today. They're asked a trivia question. If they get it right, they don't get shocked. But Jeff does because he asked a terrible question. If they get it wrong, they get shocked to the song that you want us to sing. Text in at 78592. What song do you want to hear from the person who gets shocked this morning? And you know what? It's been a while. And Young Jeffrey gets excluded from picking names a lot. He but does. he does read the question, so why doesn't Jeff pick the name out of the hat this morning oh, to see who gets the shot caller? Don't you feel special today, Jeff? Don't try and act like you're a nice person, Jubal. <laughs> hey, he's giving me a hat. Good, I got your name out oh, of the hat, man. Jubal. Oh, nice. Damn it. <laughs> so that didn't, that backfired it didn't work big out, time. did it? Nice try. All right, well, I've got the shot caller. I'm putting that on while I do that. Young Jeffrey, please read me the shot caller question of the day a little nicer. (laughs) You're hurting my feelings. You just talked about all those strange American towns, but speaking of American cities, everybody knows Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States. I bet everybody does. Right? Is the sad part. Absolutely. Somebody was just shocked by that. (laughs) What? (laughs) It was named after our first president, George Washington, and out of the 50 states, four of them have state capitals that are named after U.S. presidents. Name the four presidents who have state capitals named after them. I got two right now. You do? I yeah, Madison, one. Wisconsin. Oh, Lincoln, that's Lincoln good. Nebraska. Yep, Lincoln, Lincoln Nebraska. That's the one I Lincoln, Madison. Oh, 
Oh. Um, is Helena ever... was Helena Montana named after a president? Helena? No. No, Helena was. Okay, hold on. I don't think there's been any Helens. I don't think there's been any yeah. Helens <laughs> or <laughs> Helena as presidents, have there? I'm last... so bad at capitals. This is this is really I failed every We just read that place. list of weird town names in America. Is oh, there a shoot. president Booger Hole? Yeah. <laughs> Jacksonville is in it cuz that'd be Andrew Jackson. Was oh yeah, president? Jacksonville. Was he president? Yeah, it's well, it's, 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 Read the question one more time, Jeff. Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States, and it was named after first president George Washington. And out of the 50 states, four of them have state capitals that are named after presidents. Name the four presidents who have state capitals named after them. James Madison, you got Abraham Lincoln, we know for sure, because he wants you to name the presidents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lincoln, Madison, Jackson. Roosevelt. Like, is there a Roosevelt somewhere? No, what's the capital of Missouri? I don't know. Uh, I don't know the capital this anywhere. Is, this is actually the first test I ever cheated on in fifth grade, and I still feel guilty about it until this day. <laughs> I think Roosevelt, dude. I, for some no, reason, I don't no know No, there's no Roosevelt why. capital. I don't, know, I don't know of a Roosevelt. Don't uh, listen to Jose. I've got Madison, Lincoln, Jackson. And? Was, was there a president, Montgomery? Oh, uh, Montgomery, legit. Alabama? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I'm going to go with it. Whatever. Uh, that's probably wrong. Sounds legit. I didn't pay attention in school ever at all, so that's fine. <laughs> but we'll go Madison, Lincoln, Jackson, and Montgomery. Montgomery, that just sounds no. <laughs> was there a president? Mo- I don't know. I don't think no, there was. No president I don't, Montgomery. There yeah. wasn't. No. There wasn't. Damn it. Okay. The four U.S. presidents who have a state capital named after them are Andrew Jackson, Jackson, mm-hmm. Mississippi. Okay. Oh, it is okay. Jackson, Jackson Mississippi. Mississippi. Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Got that yeah, one. Got that. James Madison. Yeah. Madison, Wisconsin. Got that one. And the fourth. Do it. Oh, what is it? Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson City, oh. Missouri. Oh, Missouri. I knew it was, it was Missouri. Missouri. Jefferson Think City. Oh. Stick it, okay. Dave, with a city. <laughs> I got it wrong. Dang. <laughs> Almost right, dude. Three Why couldn't there have been a President Montgomery? Yeah. <laughs> so close. Yeah. Or President Sacramento for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just turned the shot collar on. Jose has the remote. And young Jeffrey handed me the lyrics to Lee Greenwood. Proud to be an American. I'll sing that before yeah. I get shot. Here we go. <clears throat> and I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me. And I'm glad that. I didn't get to the stand-up part. Ouch, that hurt a lot today. Moving 92.5. Win! Rocks! Fox! All right, you're going for three wins in a row today. Brooke? Okay, well, it's a start. And you're going to be playing (laughs) Gavin from Seattle, and Gavin apparently told our producers that he thinks he could smoke you. Uh, Actually, Gavin, I am not smokable. No problem. I've been listening to you guys for years. I'm ready. All right. Oh, big day. Yeah. It's been building up. Why do you feel like you could smoke Brooke today, Gavin? We listen to these questions every day in the car. Most days we always get it. I, I don't know how people lose. Are you talking oh, about really? you and I? You don't know how people lose. Oh, Gavin, those are such famous last words. Oh, God, you just jinxed yourself. <laughs> yeah, I hope you don't lose. When Man, you say dude. we listen, are you talking about you and other people, or is it like kind of the royal we? Like, we listen every day, and we think we yeah, can beat no, you. I, I, I drive with the same group of people every morning, so we, we always have debates about the questions and other oh. parts of your show. Okay. Okay, okay. debates. Well, about awesome how problem. dumb we are and how wrong we're doing everything. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> we love it. Okay, <laughs> sending Brooke out of the studio. Gavin, the play- game is played like this. you got 30 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know one, just say pass, and you have to beat Brooke outright to win. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Your time starts now, what movie was number one at the box office for the fifth straight weekend? Black Panther. What's the highest and most prestigious military decoration? Four star general. Michael Jordan still earns more endorsement money from Nike than any athlete who's currently playing. How much does he make per year? Forty million. What is the official name of the five twenty bridge? Uh, I pass. Is garlic an herb, vegetable, or a spice? Herb. What's the scientific term for someone who is addicted to stealing? Kleptomaniac. Okay, got that in. We'll bring Brooke back into the studio. So when you're not riding around in your car with others judging the show, what do you do? Uh, I work at a company called Limeade in Bellevue. Uh, we're an uh, employee of being an engagement company. Um, your phone kind of got muffly and hard to hear there. I heard Limeade. Is that the name of your company? 
Yeah, yeah, we're an employee engagement and well-being company, a software company in Bellevue. So, software. Okay, software company would have been way easier. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else you said, employee engagement, and I don't know. But anyway. Well being, I heard. That's yeah. what I just walked yeah. into. It's very Bellevue. Do you get yeah. free it's very up. Bellevue. Jose yeah. says it does sound <laughs> I don't even know what you guys are talking about. It does sound Bellevue. All right. Brooke is back in studio. Their headphones on. You ready? <sighs> yes. Here we go. Your time starts now. What movie was number one at the box office for the fifth straight weekend? Black Panther. What's the highest and most prestigious military decoration? Uh, Medal of Honor. Michael Jordan still earns more endorsement money from Nike than any athlete who's currently playing. How much does he make per year? Five million. What's the official name of the 520 bridge? Uh, floating bridge. <laughs> is garlic an herb, vegetable, or a spice? Oh, interesting. I'm going to go vegetable. What is the scientific term for somebody who's addicted to stealing? Uh, okay, let's send it over to the scoreboard and see how you guys did with Jose. Blue, you're my boy! Thank you, sir. Bolaños. <laughs> Gavin, for an all-star, you, you did okay. You got two correct. Got, All right. Got a bunch of questions in, Brooke. Yeah. Same amount of questions. Four correct. Oh, oh, Gavin. Sorry, Gavin. You, you didn't smoke, oh, Brooke, like you thought you would. Gavin, about that. Oh. Dang it. You want to apologize well now, Gavin? Well, you want to tell well me you're played. sorry? Well played. Well played. Mm -hmm. We will meet again. We yeah. can again. <laughs> All right, well, you've got your first official loss, so we'll wait to hear back from you, Gavin. No money cool. for you. Let's go over the answers. The number one movie at the box office for the fifth straight weekend, Black Panther. It's grossed over $600 million. It's so rad. I need to see it. The highest and most prestigious military decoration, the Medal of Honor. Members who distinguish themselves by acts of valor. Don't know what that word means, but valor. <laughs> Michael Jordan still earns more endorsement money from Nike than any other athlete who's currently playing. How much does he make per year? Not very much. Just $60 million. $60 million? Not a whole no. lot. I guess five? Yeah. $60 million. Yeah, Gabby, that's horrible. $60 million. Half point, Jubal? Half point for that one? Uh, oh sure. Oh, my God. No wonder his ex-wife oh has so much money. Oh, man. Crazy. And that's not even shoes. That's just like, yeah. you know, just I'm sponsored. Saying, hey, yeah. uh, my name is Michael Jordan, and I once oh. played in the ABA, probably the best <laughs> yeah, player ever. But one point. Yeah, and uh, Nike, go buy Nikes. And then they <laughs> give him $60 million. The official name of the 520 Bridge is the Evergreen Point Floating Bridge. Mm -hmm. Is garlic an herb, vegetable, or a spice? It's a vegetable. It's related to the onion family, so I guess it's technically a vegetable. What's the scientific term for someone who's addicted to stealing things? A kleptomaniac. Both of you guys got that one right. Gavin, you didn't win the money. You didn't smoke, Brooke, but I guess you'll be back to try again one day. Sounds good. Thanks All right. a lot, guys. Well, yeah. don't, right. don't go yet because I got something else to tell you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a digital download of the new animated movie Coco just for playing. Sweet. Yep. Hey. I heard it's right. so good. It is good. I Which one is see that? It. It's, it's the one about the Day of the Dead. The little Hispanic boy. He's got a guitar. It's He's awesome, Mexican. Dude. Don't remember that one. Yeah, and he goes back and he, like his grandpa. Kids like, movie. Yeah. Yes. Animated. animated. Pixar. Uh, Pixar. That would be why I have no idea. It's what a yeah. huge <laughs> film this year. Oh, well, cool. Yeah. There you go. Sweet, cool. Gavin. Check that movie out. Big movie. You should know all about it. We'll play One Brooks Back cool. same time tomorrow. Moving ninety two point five. Brooke and Jewel in the mornings. I'm Bradley Johnson with 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Not getting behind the wheel after drinking is the best choice. But if you're pulled over, the next best choice is to call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. It's another Jubal phone tab. And weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on moving 92.5. Hello? Hi there. I was looking for Patricia Is this Patricia who runs the Ed Sheeran fan account on Twitter? Um, yeah, actually. <laughs> well, hi, Patricia. My name is Lars Rebound, and I'm actually the tour manager for Ed. What? Yeah, how are you today? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for being such a big fan. Uh, oh, I'm probably the biggest one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out of all the fan accounts on Twitter, we like to follow yours the most. You do a great job. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <sighs> and, and, you know, Ed appreciates all of his fans so much. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and sometimes he likes to do random acts of kindness for them. And that is why I'm calling today. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. 
Oh, my gosh. Is this a dream? <laughs> well, I just pinched myself. Nope, I'm awake, which means you must be awake, too. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Here's a question. Have you met Ed before? I have not um, have ever uh, met him, but I, you know, at every concert, I try to get as close to him as possible. Yeah. But, you know, I just end up screaming. <laughs> well, he is a nice guy, and he's hoping that you're open to helping him out with something very important. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like to hear. So here's the deal. Ed Sheeran wants you, out of everybody else in this world, to watch his cats. What do you think? Wait, he's what? Yeah, Ed's a big cat lover. You knew that, I'm assuming. Y- yeah. Okay. Well, he's got 12 or 13 of them now. I, can- I-, I lost count. He keeps picking up a new cat. Seems like every city he goes to. In fact, when he goes on tour, he brings them everywhere, and he needs somebody to watch them, and that somebody could be you. What? He wants me to do that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is there a catch? <laughs> well, hopefully one won't get away, and then you have to catch it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I'm um, funny. Um, so does this mean like will I get to meet him? Frederick, his oldest cat. Yeah, you will. Uh, no, Ed. Do I get to meet Ed? Oh, Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were talking about his cats. No, you won't meet Ed. But when he comes to town next month, we're gonna come over to your place and drop all thirteen or fourteen of those cats off with you. Wait, what? Yeah, we'll just drop him off. You can watch him while he's in town doing shows, and then we'll come pick him up at the end, okay? Uh, uh, have you taken care of cats before? Um, I have. I've had one. Okay. Um, not 14, but, um, but I mean, it's it Ed Sheeran. I would do anything. I, right, this, yeah. Uh, wow. Well, um, I'll let you know one of his cats, Sandra, she gets a little angry from time to time, so just be aware of that. Okay. Do you would you happen to know if um like while I'm watching his cast, if I would have the chance to maybe like go down to where he's performing at and you know Oh yeah, no, we're gonna need you to stay home with the cats. <laughs> but they're Ed Sheeran's cats, so that's cool. Could I maybe get some concert tickets out yeah, of it? No, or no, none of that. But we would like you to watch the cats. Uh, I should let you know three of them are not alive either. Say that again? Oh, three of them are are not alive, but he still keeps them. <laughs> he hates to get rid of his cats. They're not alive. Yes. Yeah, so are they like, um, what what's that called? Like dry stuff or whatever they call them? No, he he just has them in a backpack. Um, I'm kind of getting a little freaked out now. Well, I hear you hesitating. So how about this? I'll throw in an autographed picture of Ed just for you. I mean, I have about 12 of those that my sister had sent me. Um, right. so, uh, I'll let you keep one of the dead ones. One of the dead cats? Yeah, you can have it. He won't even know it's gone. I, I don't want that. I, I'll have him sign it for you. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. Pretty sweet, huh? I mean, if your friends come over and see that hanging on your wall, you're going to be the coolest Ed Sheeran fan there is. I don't know if I'm quite the person that oh, you yeah. need for this. It's a good thing it's a prank phone call then. Wait, what? Yeah, it's a good thing that this isn't real because that would be pretty creepy if he was doing that. What do you mean a prank phone call? Who's pranking me? Oh, this is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning doing a phone tap on you and your sister Carla set you up. Oh, my God. (laughs) Are you serious? Yeah. (laughs) She said that you love Ed Sheeran so much you'd do anything for him. (laughs) What? Oh, God. Leaving it until you said that he would sign the dead cat. <laughs> oh, he's a nice guy. He'd sign a dead cat, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, he might. <laughs> Wake up every morning with Jubal phone tabs. Weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on Moving 92.5.